inside of a family, as we move from one generation to another, the values do change. The world has changed around us and we've been through different things and values can't just be on, you know, the family, the family doctrine, the, fa the, you know, it's like walking into a business where they have the values written up on the wall. And as you, as you're looking around and watching, you're like, these values are not alive and well in this business right now. This is not how they're doing it. And so I, I really would, you know, wanted to make sure that it's clear that that, Picking, picking the values and talking about them, at, you know, between generations and making sure that they're alive and well in the family right now so that you're living the values and people can see them. Would you agree that that's, you know, important and anything that you'd like to add to, you know, that either one of you? Ira. I'll go. So um, my father spoke in expressions in English and Yiddish and little cliches. And, you know, he, it's not like he didn't know how to talk except for cliches, but he had these little values that I would need to live up with. He had one that was a Yiddish expression that in English was with one ass, you can't be in two places. We had a one unit retail store in a town that was going down the tubes. And I was like, let's open a second store and get it going and then close this place. Um, he just wouldn't go with that. It, you know, it, it, no matter how much I question his value, he had this thing. Another one that's popular in family business, you need to be twice as good to get half the credit. Like, why is that true? I'm working really hard and I want to be recognized and appreciated. I don't need a parade, but at least, you know, why twice as hard? It's, it's good to just challenge your assumptions that you might be walking around with, you know, that your great grandfather told you once. Yeah. Uh, I would agree. You know, the, the values of the family and, and, and making sure that they're, they're lived, you know, day to day, especially if the founder's still around or if the founder, maybe you've gotten into the third or fourth generation and the founder's no longer around. But in either case, um, whether it's coming directly from the founder or it's been instilled in the subsequent generations, that everyone has a sense of the history and the, of the business and the family and what the key values were. And they're really being um, lived and, and people are walking the walk. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. And, and to see someone in the third or fourth generation say, you know, I know, you know, my grandfather, my great grandfather, my father, uh, or mother or grandmother, um, who started all this. Um, it was really important that we always did right by the customer, no matter what. And if we made a mistake, we fix it. And, and, and that's a crucial for us. And when people live that, when families are living it, it's a beautiful thing to see. I have, I have this deck of cards that has different values listed on the cards. I don't know if you can see them, uh, but it's one of the key things that I do with families is to really get them to think about values and what's important to them. Um, but I would say this, and in the world that, you know, Ira and I and Mike are in, it's not unusual for family business experts or consultants to do these sort of values exercises, but it's very easy to pay lip service. So you can walk through some exercise and check some boxes and say, this is what's important to us and plaster it on some plaque, you know, when you walk into the, the business and it's a complete waste of time if you're not really walking the walk. So I agree, Mike, it's super important. I think it's an essential foundation. You know, there's a big difference between saying these are important and doing something different or really kind of weaving it into the fabric of the family of, of generations through, through the way that the older generation behaves and through the stories that uh, that each generation tells about the history of the family and the business. Yeah. When we're working with a family, one of the things that we like to do is an exercise called actions to live by. And so that we get people talking about is how do we make sure that we're, these values are seen by everybody in the family, our employees, our customers, our vendors, that they're alive and well, and that we're living, you know, the, the action by actions, not just talking about them. So. I know sometimes um, you, you give a talk at a rotary and they'll give you this coin that has their fourfold test on it. Is it, is it the truth? Is it fair to all? Is it, you know, whatever their values it's good to have a checklist like that so if a family agrees in the beginning of a meeting uh we believe in transparency and then it comes out that you know the father just regularly takes a million dollars from the company and gives it to the daughter you know the son can say or i can say is that transparent like explain how we're living our values 
I agree that when you when you really do the values thing as a family and you buy into it, it's not some pie in the sky thing. It's it it actually helps you with your toughest decisions. Here's a big decision: Do we try to you know we're having a tough time with COVID? Do we sell the business if it's even possible? Do we walk away or do we try to turn it around? Whatever it might be, you could sort of look at the values and and also the stories that go with those values and say this is what's happened in the past and this is what we said is important to us and it should help you. Um, even avoid conflicts if everybody buys into the values.